Welcome back. So continuing the preparation for uh, having everything ready for when I get the new prop shaft. Uh, what I'm doing here is pulling the old oil seal out of the front end of the redrive. And I actually had an old puller that I had used to do this previously, one that I got from Harbour Freight. But unfortunately that's uh, in storage now, so I couldn't find that. So I had to go and get another one. And uh, not a big deal because it's pretty cheap at Harbour Freight. And... Uh, there was quite a little bit of prep work involved. I made it look easy here, but a bit of prep work involved to get those hooks underneath the seal. You pretty much have to just throw away that seal. Um, but you know, I've got a new one to go in there anyway. So, and I needed to get that out because you can't get the large tapered roller bearing out when the seal's there. And I need to get the, the large tapered roller bearing out in order to put the new shuttle, the new oil collar in uh, once it's in place. So there's the large bearing. So I just put that away in safekeeping and uh, just get this all cleaned up and uh, then I can drill those holes in the bottom there, the new holes for where uh, the oil return is going to come from that new uh, oil collar. And as I was mentioning before and showed a while back in the CAD, uh, those um, feeds are going to, or those returns are going to come out of the collar directly through a little um, a little tube there, uh, a little, oh, what do you give, I can't remember what you call them, but anyway, going to come out of there, that, that hole there and that hole there, so the existing hole's in the wrong spot, obviously, so I'm going to have two holes overlapping, as you'll see here shortly. So I was going to run this up to Brits and do it, but decided just to do it uh, in the hangar there, so I've got, because uh, the drill press that I had was going to fit and uh, be able to handle it, so there I've got my centering drill and just uh, starting the pilot hole for the one and then I did the one for the other side as well and as you'll see here uh, after I got the pilot holes uh, done I just uh, drilled a hole through there with a small bit so I've got a, a hole all the way through and because ultimately I want to go up to half inch uh, that's basically the size or oversize for those little tubes that are going to be running through into the collar so anyway I started with a smaller bit there and now you can see I've gone under the step drill and took the step drill down as far as I could and uh, because you know the drill press doesn't have all that much travel on it in order to you know to be able to take the strip step drill all the way through and it's actually quite a thick housing there I think it's a good three quarters of an inch thick there where um, I'm drilling these holes uh, so anyway I had to readjust after um, doing it the first time and uh, with the step drill and as you can see I'm just getting a little bit further and then ultimately once I'd gone as far as I could with the step drill I actually took it off the um, the drill press there and just with the regular hand drill and I had a little bit further to go for half inch so I just got the half inch bit there and just uh, cleared it out the last little bit um, off of the drill press just using the hand drill because uh, yeah the drill press you couldn't I couldn't fit um, the housing under there with the half inch drill bit in there it was just too long uh, so just again this drill press just doesn't have as much travel as what you need for doing a job like this but you know you make do and uh, so this is the result here as you can see and I've cleaned it all up now and just deburred the edges and stuff so um, I've got basically two new holes in there uh, on either side of the other hole that was already there so um, and so what's going to happen now there's one of the little right angles that I got which is actually perfect for this job because it has a little NPT thread in it for the right angle and then an AN fitting on the end so I'm going to be sleeving that with some heat shrink that little tube there and then that'll thread in there and I'm obviously going to put some pipe seal on there and that'll go through the hole and that'll screw into uh, the oil collar and then there'll be the other one so t two of those coming out of the oil collar so that's pretty much how that's going to work and then for the feed it's the same thing except uh, the feed's a bit heavier and so uh, you know the oil coming out of the return is now going to go with a you know a couple little short runs there of an AN4 uh, with those 45s into a Y and then that'll feed back AN6 into uh, the sump so the next thing I had to do here uh, which is something from the other day after I put that redrive in, I didn't do the safety wiring here. I wanted to make sure that that new coupling was working fine. So I need to safety wire these bolts again so they don't come loose. And uh, that didn't take very long to do, as you can see here. Got that done. 
without any drama getting actually fairly comfortable at doing safety wire stuff now that I've done quite a bit of it so that one's out of the way and uh, on to the next step so the next thing is uh, this is the um, the little tube there that's the oil feed for the new oil collar and that has a little adapter that goes from NPT to AN6 uh, where the oil feed coming from the governor actually attaches to that AN6 fitting so here I'm just putting some um, you know pipe thread seal on there and uh, just you know tight, tightening that little fitting in there in preparation for you know just trying to get everything as much done as I can ahead of time uh, before I get the oil collar and the uh, and the new prop shaft so I just wanted to show you yeah, that's, that's, you know working on stuff doing whatever I can get done right now and you know I have quite a few little projects still to do but um, you know the big one is definitely getting this uh, constant speed prop working that's key so there I put the little the coupling on there on the end of that little pipe and I still can't remember the name of that thing it's just kind of you know slipped my mind right now nipple that's what it is <laughs> it's a little nipple so um, anyway it's funny how it came back um, so yeah I had the nipple on there with a coupling and uh, then putting the AN um, to uh, NPT adapter on there and just tighten those all down so that one's all ready now just to screw into the top of the coupling and then as I said the oil feed the existing oil feed line that I had from before will just um, screw into that so as you can see that'll sit in there and I'm going to be putting um, a little bit of rubber hose around there to hold it sort of snug in that oversized hole that's already there so there's there's my little bit of you know just rubber fuel hose that I put a, a cut in it so it stretches around the nipple there and then that goes through the hole probably going to have to large that hole a little bit it has a thread in it right now but I won't need that um, as as you can see it's a little sitting a little rough in there I want it to fit better than that but I'll wait till I got the the oil collar in there and, and with the prop shaft in there and see how much clearing I need to do with that thread that's in there in order to get that to sit nicely okay so the next thing I can do is um, get these um, fittings sorted out so that's the little Y and I need to make these two little short lines there so fortunately I had this little bit of A and 4 line that already had two connectors on it so that saved me doing a little bit of work so what I'm going to do is just cut those connectors off um, just cut the last you know say four inches off there you know just using that with a metal cutting wheel just put some uh, masking tape around where I'm going to cut first just to keep the stainless steel braid from fraying when you cut it and then you cut it really quickly um, so it doesn't fray and do a nice clean cut in there and then the last thing you have to do is just clean out the um, the little PTFE tube on the inside there and and um, you know just blow it out with the air gun so this is the one from the other side so just cutting that off there and the actual bit that I'm going to use is still in the vise there so now I, what I have to do is basically put those little 45 um, I think they're 45s, 22 and a half, so I don't know put those um, fittings on the ends of those two short bits and then that remaining little bit of uh, hose there that I've got I can just put that back in my box of spare hose for a use sometime again in the future I guess so there's my two little short ends there still with a tape on them so just cleaning out the ends here just got a little pick there to just get any uh, any little bits of you know shrapnel or whatever out of there and then uh, blow them out with the air gun and it's ready to put the fitting on the end so there we go just blowing that out and it doesn't take much time to put the fittings on the end of these usually these uh, stainless steel on these braids flares out pretty good when you um, get it started there so best the first thing to do is put the um, the end cover on the hose there before you do anything else then you can pull the tape off and then you just uh, splay out the stainless steel braid a little bit and then you can put the little uh, collar on there a little gold collar on there which sort of uh, pushes out the stainless steel and then ultimately put the the end fitting on there and see so what I'm doing there is just pushing that little gold collar into the end of the tube to make sure that it's um, the tube pushes all the way in on the collar and if you don't get it all the way in you're not going to get a good a good seal there and you're going to have a leaky fitting so 
even though these ones aren't under any pressure and that's just going to be a sort of gravity drain still want to make sure that they don't leak at all so yeah you put the um, put the end fitting on there and then the easiest thing to do is just go and put it in the vise and then uh, just put one side in the vise and then just use a wrench to tighten the other side down while you know making sure it's not sort of coming out of the collar and the the actual hose itself so I did uh, both of those and uh, got those sorted out so the only other thing I have to do now with respect to hoses um, is I've got one the old return line is probably going to have to be shortened well it is definitely going to have to be shortened but I don't want to do that now until I've got everything in place because I don't know exactly the length so the next thing here I had a Y in there which was a A and 8 and then with some re a reducer there from 6 to 8 and then I also had another 8 feet in there so what I did a, a little while ago when I bought all these parts I bought a, a Y that is basically two sixes, two A and 6's that goes to an 8 and that's just going to clean up that whole little solution so I won't need that reducer that's coming from the the one on the left hand side that you saw just now that's coming from the return feed of the governor so there's the two and you can see one small quite a bit smaller than the other but still uh, a and eight on the end but uh, a and six on the starts for the one that i'm using so now that one just basically goes onto that return feed that goes back into the sump so I just sort of uh, screw that in there doing it with one hand a little tricky so Maybe we should end up evolving um, as a species and that so we have three hands and two hands for working and one hand for holding the camera. That would be a good a good evolution. I'm not sure where the other hand would come from. It'd be a bit weird, but it'd definitely be handy. <laughs> um, anyway, so that uh, there's the other line coming from the governor, so that's now uh, on there and tightened up. So the other feed coming or the return coming back from the oil shuttle is going to go to that remaining part of the wire and that's the line I was telling you about there it's just too long right now so I have to shorten that one up but I'll wait until I have the um, the whole where drive in place and then I'll know exactly how long I need to shorten that to or how short I need to shorten it to so uh, yeah that's that's a job for you know once everything's together and there, there's the rest of it so there's my two little shorties that I created so they'll be coming out of the uh, bottom of the redrive there wiring together and then on that one in my hand that's the one that's going to get shortened and then just join over to the other one there and so that's the oil return for the new setup and hopefully this will be the final setup and everything will work so moving on uh, this guy this is the vent thing for the fuel tank so it's normally just going to have air in there but in the rare case that you do fully fill the tanks up and it's sitting out on the ramp and the fuel expands or whatever or you take off on a real st steep angle or whatever and fuel would normally go out the vent it'll go into this thing and then uh, through the bottom and then if any if it fills up then it'll come out that top bit there on the side and I've got that rubber hose there it's going to come out of that and then this little fitting and I'm creating this little bracket um, where that fitting is going to vent through the bottom part of the cowling there and I'm going to actually you'll see I'm going to have it sort of uh, raised above there so it won't be able to get any sort of low pressure vacuum and actually suck fuel you know through the whole venting system and out of the tank so I'm creating this bracket I've just sort of started on doing that so it sits through there and the bracket will ultimately be a little s as you can see and I drilled some other holes in that and roughed it up that's just going to get bonded in place there and then a nice half inch hole where it can feed through so that way if there's low pressure underneath the wing there it will just pull air from around the cowling there and it won't have enough uh, seal there to actually suck any vacuum on that whole system and pull fuel from the tank and it'll still leak out nicely if it ever overflows so uh, the bottom of that tank came with a half inch NPT thread and I actually had to make it a little bit deeper but I didn't show that because it was just tedious um, you know I got the tap and I just had to take it down about another four turns on the tap before that fitting would go in but as you can see I uh, got that bolted up now and I just put it on the angle it was the best fit there it's not going to make that much of a difference there'll be a little fuel that'll mainly uh, possibly remain in that bottom little corner but there's the return there and so um, or the the vent feed there and uh, as you can see now I've actually drilled the hole and I bonded that into place and it's just drying there and you can see how the that um, um, bonding agent there that we use in the tube uh, the two-part stuff 
is just setting up there and there's the hole that I drew there the one and you can sort of look up in there there's the one on the right there and there you can see the inlet there or the what's the outlet actually of the fuel vent coming through there so it'll allow the fuel to drip out through the bottom of the wing if it ever gets too full um, anyway so that's done and while I was using that epoxy stuff um, I also sealed down that little flap there um, on the vent and it's just that the one that covers over the parachute strap because the parachute strap traverses uh, that little area there so that's pretty much everything for Wednesday and Thursday and now we're on to Friday and one of the things I wanted to do was uh, reconfigure the two G3X displays there so they're basically, uh, basically the same so I've got them set up um, as PFD on the left hand side and then the you know the MFD on the right hand side with the movie map or whatever you've got selected at any given point there's a bunch of different chapters there pages you can go through and on the far left side got the engine information which really in this case is just fuel flow and fuel levels uh, so the oil collar it showed up just arrived in the mail um, Friday today um, which is when I'm recording this and uh, no sh no shaft yet that's still um, at the hardening chrome shop but at least I got this guy and it looks good and uh, you know that's what it needed to be so there's the two return holes that I was talking about and then the feed hole at the top and then on the inside you can see the close tolerance areas that are going to fit really close you know, within two thou there of the prop shaft and that's going to allow the oil to feed into the prop shaft and ultimately to to the prop to uh, change the angle of the blades so there I've just gone and sat it inside the housing there it just fits in there loose that's the whole idea it's going to ride on the shaft uh, but not touch the housing so there's those two nipples one's longer than the other so because uh, they overlap um, with the return and you can see it sitting in there and you can see the gap around it and there's the feed going through the larger hole it doesn't have the rubber tube on there but basically you get the idea that's how it's going to sit and these are the bearings that I purchased a little while ago real narrow little things and they need to be pressed in they, they sort of start sitting in there but they need to be pressed in so um, I don't have the press um, handy right now so I'll probably just run these up to Brits uh, once I've got the shaft I want to I definitely want to check them on the shaft and check the oil collar on the shaft before I assemble those pieces and there's the bevel washers that I have those are going to be the ones that basically hold that thing to stop it from moving fore and aft on the shaft so I've got a handful of those and they'll be just I'll probably end up putting four or five of those in there whatever it takes in order to get that to sit nicely there and not move around so next up uh, just working through these little projects I've just gone and cable tie that little valve there that's the main fuel valve coming from the the fuel boost pump there that goes to the engine and so I've just gone and cable tied that so it won't accidentally vibrate shut and the same thing um, in the cabin you'll see in a minute so there's that uh, vent now so that little black sort of curved flap there was just sort of sitting loose there and I've got just a few dabs of, um, of that epoxy in there to hold that down so if the parachute ever deploys it'll actually just rip up the little epoxy dabs and the parachute strap will be able to come out and now we're back in the cabin so and on and again sort of uh, just cleaning up things so I've safety wired the valves on these um, or the arms on these two fuel cutoff valves these are the ones that go from the straight tanks into the header tank so just safety wire those open so they don't accidentally close um, with vibration or whatever and uh, this is that one from uh, the previous day there so now I've got that uh, return or the vent hose there uh, cable tied in place and then uh, attached to my little vent there and you can see the hole going through the bottom there of the uh, of the cowling so if that needs to vent it can draw vent air in there to allow the fuel to run out of the tanks and replace with air at the same time it can pour fuel out of there if it needs to if it ever gets that full from expansion so that's that job done and uh, lastly um, Justin and Elliot had asked me these are test pilots had asked me to find out what the control force that it takes to override the spring that we have on the elevator so I've got my little um, a little hoist scale there or whatever you want to call it um, crane scale and uh, just you know strapped it up around the uh, control stick and as you see I get it to about 75 pounds which I think is reasonable and and that's what I told Justin that it was going to be around about there so I think he's happy with that but anyway I did another 
couple of tests on that uh, after I turned the camera off and uh, unfortunately I ended up um, breaking the um, fiberglass spring so I'm glad I found that there as you can see so that didn't work very well and again just following along from what velocity does so I've uh, hit up Mark to ask him what needs to happen with that and possibly I may need to hit up Jeff and ask him if he wants to make another one for us but obviously not with that same construction because that's no good um, I'm not sure why that broke because I wasn't you know straining it that much so anyway I disassembled it pulled it pulled it out of there and uh, as you can see she's broken so I'm gonna come up with a new solution for that it can't be carbon fiber because they're too rigid uh, but something needs to happen uh, anyway so it's not the best way to end off the week but um, next week should be pretty exciting I've been told that the prop shaft will be ready early next week so hopefully I'll have it back Tuesday or Wednesday or something that I can get uh, that redrive together. Anyway, that's our update for this week. Thanks again for watching and uh, tune in again next week.